Good afternoon, everybody. I want to thank you for uh, joining us today. Today we're formally launching Miami-Dade County's new contact tracing app called Combat COVID uh, MDC. It's a really good tool uh, to help everyone healthy, keep help everyone healthy in our community. It will also build trust so that our local businesses can continue to reopen. Let me stress that this app requires no personal information, no GPS or location data is tracked. The information is encrypted. So there's absolutely no reason to fear that big government is tracking your every move. It's really about protecting you. The app is in English, Creole, and in Spanish. And by the way, Palm Beach County is using the same app and Broward is considering it so that it will be synergy to help us beat this virus throughout, this, uh, throughout South Florida. The point of this app is to save lives and to tamp down the spread of the virus. It uses Bluetooth connection to anonymously notify users if they have been near another person who has downloaded the app and has self-reported being positive for COVID-19. If the app shows potential exposure, isolate and get tested right away because even if you feel fine, you can be spreading the virus to your loved ones and those at high risk of getting severely ill. If you do test positive, the app lets you discreetly alert others to get tested without disclosing your identity. You can download the, the free app for iPhones from the Apple Store or you can get it from the Google Store for Android. The uh, name again is Combat COVID MDC. And to be clear, the, op the app can operate in the background of your cell phone. Uh, you just have to make sure that you don't uh, swipe the app when you're closing other applications on your cell and the app was not closed by the system. Leave it open in the background and it will keep working. I've assigned our Internal Services Department Director Jacques uh, Bentolia to uh, oversee our contact tracing program. He's here today to answer any questions you may have about the app's function, how it works, as, as well as some other things that we're doing. The bottom line, by using the app, you will be keeping yourself and others safer while ensuring your privacy is protected. Again, I want to reiterate this app does not track you. It just uh, makes sure when you are close to another phone for a certain period of time and a certain distance, they'll exchange the phones, will actually exchange a little key. Now, if you, decide, if you then self-report as a positive, that other individual will get a notification that someone, uh, they've been close to somebody who has tested positive. It won't tell that individual who it was. It'll just tell them that somebody, that they were close to somebody within the algorithm and that they should get tested right away. This is one, part of our effort uh, with contact tracing and to help keep the uh, virus down. This app will complement uh, the contact tracing that the Florida Department of Health is conducting. I want to thank Dr. Uh, Yesenia Villalta, who's here from the Florida Department of Health uh, in Miami-Dade County for joining us here today. Thank you. Contact tracers at the health department are reaching out by phone to people who test positive in our county to get the information needed to protect others from exposure. Please do not hang up on contact tracers from the health department. Help them so they can help our entire community and stop the spread. And we'll be getting indications that a lot of people are not answering the questions. They're not responding to the contact tracers. And I recall about a month ago, two months ago, the whole, everything was about contact tracing, contact tracing, contact tracing. Well, now that we have the spread down, it is about contact tracing. And we need your help in the community to answer the phone, answer the questions. That way we can notify other people that may be infected, don't know they're infected, may be infecting their loved ones. So it's very, very important that, uh, that we answer the questions and please answer the phone uh, when a contact tracer is calling you. And again, Dr. Vialta is here to answer any questions. Behind me uh, here today are Sprinter testing vans. They were now deploying uh, throughout Miami-Dade County, especially in underserved areas. We have eight vans already operating and four more are on the way. These sprinters will be making stops at supermarkets, metro rail stations, public parks, and even Zoo Miami and sports venues. Setting up a uh, shop in parking lots, each van can test up to 250 people per day. The Combat COVID app and the Sprinter vans are really a great example of our county's work to overcome the virus. They're an expansion of our county's work to uh, uh, overcome this virus. So everyone should be sure to download the app and look for the vans at a location near you. If you want to get tested, simply come up to the van, okay, and we can test you. We continue to see our infection rate under 5% daily, and our 14-day average hovering around 5%, so that's really a great sign. It's really where we wanted to get to. We want to get even, even down even further. 
This morning I met with our local medical experts and yesterday we had a, a weekly meeting with the White House doctors who are pleased with Miami-Dade's results to contain the, the virus. Based on our conversations with the doctors, I have decided that we can stagger some openings. I will be signing an order to allow the openings of, by this Friday of certain indoor spaces uh, if they are ready. Again, I'm not ordering them to open. If they can open, they can open. This will apply to movie theaters, bowling alleys, concert halls, convention spaces, banquet halls, and certain indoor amusement venues. They can open at 50% capacity, but they must follow the guidelines in place, including, obviously, wearing masks, distancing of six feet, and special HVAC systems to bring more fresh air into those spaces. Also, like the rules governing casinos, no food or beverages will be allowed while watching movies or bowling. There must be designated areas for food and drink where people can take off their masks, uh, practice distancing, and, uh, and that's the safest way possible to eat and drink. As for bars and other entertainment venues, my team and our local medical experts will be meeting next week with business owners to discuss what's doable in the future. The goal is to allow those bars to have tables, again, those bars that have table and the ability to, to be able to operate under the same rules that guide restaurants, which means no live music, correct ventilation, uh, and all those other public health measurements and requirements uh, in the new normal guide that is keeping us safe. Uh, what we can't have is people hanging out at bar counters. That's not allowed in restaurants either, by the way. Restaurants that have bars, those bars are closed. Um, there's no date yet to open the bars, but we are working hard to see what, we can be, you know, what can be done in a safe manner as quickly as possible. Countywide curfew will continue from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m., and it's help, helping us keep our infections rate down. Police will be strictly enforcing the curfew and all other safety rules that we have in place. All the doctors agree that the curfew has helped tremendously to tamp down the spread. The key to be able to continue to open businesses and get people back to work will be a lot of following the rules and participating in contact tracing. So please continue to wear your masks, keep your distance, wash your hands often, keep them away from your face,